my name is Corey Bedwelzer. I have been in Shanghai for five and a half years. Um, I'm from the States, grew up in Virginia, um, raised in Virginia, then Hong Kong, and then California. So I kind of just tell people I'm from LA. Surrender. Surrender means, to me it means desperation. To me it means, um, it's like a combination of desperation and freedom and pain <laughs> all together. But to me, um, surrender is, is the goal uh, of where our lives need to be. And so to me right now, I think if you'd asked me a year ago, I would have just said pain. And you ask me now and I say freedom. Um, and that's surrender. Virginia, um, Christian family, very much mostly in a bubble. I moved to Hong Kong when I was um, in high school and so I got kind of international experience um, and loved it. Uh, married a guy who loved God and wanted to also go overseas because I wanted to go back overseas after college. So um, dated all four years in college, uh, graduated worked for a couple years, came to China, uh, learned Chinese, so we just had kind of an exciting adventure together. And uh, the whole time, you know, just, I've always loved God, have always, you know, started a relationship with God when I was 12. Uh, really felt like I heard from Him um, when I was 12. And really, I think, um, definitely had a solid relationship with God in terms of a foundation, but, didn't really know what it meant day to day to to know him and to rely on him. I think um, I found that out. I thought I did. I thought everything was great. Um, I thought my marriage was specially was great. I knew that. I mean, God had really put my husband in my life, um, and that was really obvious. And so um, it came as a huge shock to me when uh, it was a 2010, about two years ago. All of a sudden, he was out of my life, um, and there's a whole story to go with that that we don't have time for. But just our marriage, as I knew it, shattered and was broken, and there were with it, um, I, I, all of a sudden broke. Um, I had no idea how vulnerable I was to how to, to that breaking, but I broke, um, and I stopped eating, I stopped functioning, I didn't know who I was, um, I was by myself, and um, I didn't know who God was, where God was. It was, everything became, everything about God became in theory to me. It just, I was just uh, so lost, so confused. Um, the one thing in my life that I knew was from God all of a sudden was gone and confusing and all of these things were, were um, it was just a really tough season and I um, went through, I mean I checked myself into counseling, <laughs> I called out my closest friends and said you got to come over and pray with me and just started a road of trying to understand all of this and trying to um, search for God in the midst of this um, and um, just felt lost most days just trying to get through the day um, but early on the crazy part was that I and especially about um, just even a week into kind of when everything just crashed um, I had a really strong encounter with God um, and that's when I knew that I wasn't, I wasn't really alone, even though I felt alone. And he told me, um, just in this vision that I had, I just saw this vision as I was lying on the couch going, God, how do I get off the couch? How do I get off the couch? Um, and he told me that he was for me. And he told me that he was gonna restore me. And I saw a picture of that. Um, and 
it was just funny because it involved this little turtle <laughs> that had a very strong meaning to me and it was kind of funny but he just told me to wait on him and that uh, that I was gonna get through it and so I just every day was like okay God you got to get me through the day you got to get me through the day um, and now it's two years later and um, I'm still alone. <laughs> I still go home, you know, alone. My husband is not back. My husband um, is on his own journey with God right now. Um, but I feel freer than I've ever felt. I feel like I'm living an abundant life and I feel like God has shown up for me every time that I've asked him to show up for me. He has given me all kinds of visions, all kinds of dreams, all kinds of people in my life to support me. And I had to get to a place though where I was willing to say, take my marriage. I offer my marriage. I, it can't be, it cannot be, um, I can't be whole without you. I can't do this without you. Take my dependency on my husband. Um, and I had to just hold him out and give him up. And that was my process of surrender. My biggest fear was that I was just going to be alone, that <laughs> that he and I weren't going to be together. And my biggest fear is then, well, then who am I? Who am I? What am I going to do in my life? I've, I have my life planned out. I have, uh, and this is good, and this is from you, God. So, what do I do? Like, what do you mean, live, try to live my life by myself? Like, I, I just it was, that was just a fear of mine because he was he was my best friend, and I. I didn't know how to do life without him. I didn't know how to do life without his support. I, I missed him. I needed him. I was desperate to be, um, to just have him and I be on the same page again. But we weren't. Um, and so my fear was that, was that, um, yeah, my fear was that he wasn't, uh, we weren't ever going to be together again. Um, and, as it went on, and as I learned how to give him up more, my fear more became, and this is the really interesting part, my fear more became that I was going to go back to the way I was before everything broke. My fear actually became of myself, and of my apathy, and of my dependence on every other thing possible than God. And I actually began to, um, to really be scared because there were these moments of kind of breakthrough where I would be like, oh, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be normal again. And I felt that apathy kind of sink back in that I used to have of like, oh, my comfortable little life and here's God on the shelf and here am I doing my thing and doing, you know, controlling my own life and everything. And actually that's a really scary place that I have grown to kind of fear that I will just resort right back to. So um, it's a new kind of fear, probably in the last six to eight months that I really, because it's been about two years now since everything happened and, um, and yeah, I'm scared to go back. But I don't feel dominated by that fear right now. <laughs> now is like the joy period. Now is like the, now is the, freeing period. Um, I think it used to be that I'd get hit. I would just get hit with this overwhelming fear, this overwhelming pain, sadness, loneliness, rejection all the time. It would just like own me for like three days. I would just be floored or then it, but then something would happen. I'd interact with someone or I'd hear a song or I'd see something or I'd just know God would speak something out to me or I'd know that he was around he would just show me that he was around and then and then brought me out of that place of pain where I could just like see again and I knew that his hand was totally covering my husband totally on me that he was over, he's bigger than all of this and I was okay so that process of like pain going before God in desperation handing it over feeling a freedom like it used to take a lot longer and now I mean, then it was like, okay, so three days to like one day, and then one day to like four hours, and then four hours to like, you know, 30 minutes. And now it's like, I'll get hit, you know? Um, I'll be somewhere with a lot of couples, and it'll just be me. And I'll 
you know, it hurts. <laughs> it just sucks. Um, I look at my wedding ring and I see that I remember, you know, and it's hard. And so it'll, 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 hurt, it'll hurt for a minute, or hurt for two minutes. And then I'll remember who God is, and I'll remember all the things that He's done, and I'll remember all the beauty that He's brought out of this. And I remember that He has a plan, and He has a way for me through it. And then I'll just get giddy all of a sudden, <laughs> and I'll be alive and free. And, and so my struggles are still the normal struggles of not having Him around and missing Him. And my struggles are just the normal struggles of missing my best friend. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's hard. It's hard and um, sometimes it hits me more than other times. Um, but but um, there's so much joy. Like my life is so much more dominated by joy now than it is by pain. Um, and it's this weird kind of commingling of both. But I think that's surrender. It's, you can't have one without the other because it, it's painful to let go of patterns that we had. You know, it's painful to let go of things that we were dependent on. Um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I was just telling a friend this morning um, who's going through a really hard time um, and I told him um, when, when you feel like you know exactly what you you need from God that you you're dying for a certain thing um, I said go out and do that thing for someone else you feel like you have nothing to give all you feel is just a desperation for something to receive something go out and do it for someone else. And for me, that's what a very uh, good mentor of mine, close mentor of mine told me. And I found that to be an incredible way to receive from God, is that when I was able to um, all of a sudden just notice around me the things that needed that I could do, things that I could do for people, things that I could be for people that I could have never been for them mm -hmm. in the past. And all of a sudden, people were getting helped. People were being encouraged. People were being, um, even just, pr I'm a very practical person. I remember calling up a friend and being like, is there anything I can do for you? You know, is there anything I can help you with? You know, because I speak Chinese and they needed some help with something. And I just, that was the only thing that could come to mind is like, maybe I can help them with a project, you know, that, um, because I have some free time now, you know, <laughs> a little bit. So I'm gonna, can I help you with a project? Can I help you communicate this in Chinese with, when, and get this issue sorted for you? And they were so grateful for that help. And I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> and um, um, so I guess that's just a practical thing. It's like, it's amazing how we don't think we have anything to give, but God gives us a way to give where helping another person in the midst of this, mm -hmm. we receive so much in return. Um, the other thing I would say is community. Surround yourself with community. If you're in a place, especially if you're, God's asking you to lay down something really big, um, you need people, you need a, like a cheering squad behind you. <laughs> like, I feel like God gave me cheerleaders like in every, like in different countries and sending me emails and just, you need to let people know that you're going through it and sharing it is so powerful. Um, and so you need to have community. Um, if it's something really super traumatic, you need to have a counselor. <laughs> um, but yeah, surround yourself with truth. Don't let yourself dive. Um, be honest with God. Be honest with the pain that you have. But, um, but surround yourself with uh, the truth that we are that you are loved we are loved I am loved um, and I'm not forgotten and I'm not abandoned and I'm not rejected um, and I need to be reminded of that every single second um, and needed at certain points to be reminded of that every single second and uh, not to slip into discouragement
Sorg. Um, for me, it means every day going, God, you lead this. You take control. I can't control. You show me what to do today. Show me truth today. Show up for me today. You have the bigger picture. I don't have the bigger picture. You have to lead this. You have to show up for me today. You have to. You said that you're never going to leave me. Prove it and show yourself to me today. I need you. I, 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 give, you, I give you control. I can't do it.